Hi guys, this is the seventh part of this Angular 16 tutorial series. In this part, I will let you know how we can fetch the data by calling any kind of API. We will be using the HTTP client module, which is the built-in module in Angular, which is recommended to use in Angular to call APIs to get, put, post, patch, delete any kind of requests. Okay. So first of all, I'll be importing the HTTP client module in my app.module.ts file. So I'll be writing the import and I'll be writing HTTP client module and uh, it will come from the common HTTP and I can copy this and along with the other modules, I can paste HTTP client module. Now we can use HTTP client module in our services. So I'm using the same project that I used in the previous video where I showed you how we can call the static data. So I will be actually using this public API, uh, JSON placeholder dot type code dot com slash posts. Uh, and when I will call this API using the URL, it will give me all these hundred posts over here. Okay. So, uh, we will be using that and showing it in our HTML in our browser on this UI. Okay. So here, first of all, let's go to our services and in the service file, we can actually import that module. So I will be importing that module so I can write the HTTP client, not module only HTTP client because a uh, client module has to be added in our app.module file only. Okay. So here I will use the add angular slash common slash HTTP. All right. So this is what we can use. So in the last video, I showed you how we can create an object for any kind of module or a service and that's called the dependency injection. So we actually need to create its object in our constructor. So I'll be writing the private HTTP HTTP client. Okay. Now we can use this HTTP to fetch the data and call any kind of API. Let's create a URL, which we will be calling and I will name it private API URL and private means that this variable should not be accessible outside this service directly. Okay. And if we make it public, this variable can be accessed outside this service. Just like in this component, we can use message service dot API URL and we don't want this to happen. Okay. We only want to use this URL directly in this service. So equals to string and I can copy this URL, which I will be using. So I'll be pasting over here. All right, so let's create a function and in that function, I will be calling this API. So I'll be writing the get posts and then I will be returning an observable. Okay. So observable means that uh, it can have multiple subscribers mean that uh, any component that has access to this service can actually call this function and in return, they will be subscribing to this function to get the data of the posts. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll explain you more in a bit. So observable is a built in function of the RxJS. So observable RxJS, you can see it has been imported and then inside it, we, it will actually return an array of posts over here. All right. So we can use the any of post for now because we don't have an interface of post now that I'll just show you how we can create interface and use it over here. All right. So here it's showing an error because I'm not returning the observable of array. Okay, so I can write the return this dot HTTP dot get and then the API URL. Okay, um, I can actually add the type to it. So any this one. Now the error should be gone because this the what is it is expecting. So this is the return type of this function. Okay, and it is actually returning the same stuff which is expecting from here. So let's save it. Uh, let's come over here and inside it. Um, I'm actually using one lifecycle hook and this one lifecycle hook is called ng on init. All right. I've already created a long, almost one hour long video in that video. I have actually explained all the eight lifecycle hooks of angular 
16 with examples uh, i'll give the links of my angular 16 playlist in the description of the video if you have already learned angular and have the just revising angular stuff i would recommend you guys to check that out but if you are just a beginner and learning from the scratch course uh, i would request you to not to look at that video as of now uh, maybe after 10 videos of this tutorial series i would suggest you to check that video at that time okay because the learning life cycle hooks is very important topic without that you cannot even create a small application so check out that video if you have learned the stuff up to the components how components communicate with each other uh, yeah so this one using this hook we actually need to implement that uh, like this it has to be added over here as well so on in it like this all right so what this happens is first of all whenever the component loads component mounts uh, this constructor runs and whenever the constructor completed then this lifecycle hooks run it means that whenever component is initialized then we need to this function automatically triggers we don't need to call this function it automatically triggers we usually use this uh, uh, lifecycle hook in angular to initialize any variable which we have created above or we use this variable to call any uh, api to fetch the data and load the variables which are added over here all right so i will be actually creating a new variable over here so i'll be naming it post and it is of type uh, any and then array of type any all right so this lifecycle hook i'm using to actually uh, initialize this variable with the data which will be coming from this service and this service is actually going to call the api to return us the data okay so first of all i'm actually going to use the this dot message service which i've already created its object above dot and it will show me two methods one is the get post and messages we need to use the get post and then it provide us a subscribe function okay so subscribe function and then it will give us the post arrow function and then in the arrow function we can um, actually uh, call this curly braces okay so inside date we can actually get the posts so if we can check if there is an error so we can detect the error from this comma and then error and then arrow function again and if there is an error from that service then we can actually show it over here otherwise we can use this dot post and this is what we have actually already added so you don't get confused let's change its name to response so I'm going to write this dot post equals to the response okay so this post is actually going to receive this data which is the array of all the posts so let's now console dot log error and then the error let's save it and it will not show anything as of now uh, but i'm assuming that the data should be saved in this variable now it's time to actually show this data in our html okay so here i'm just going to write and loop through all the objects i showed you how to use ng for directive in one of my previous videos so i'm going to write first of all let's add this so posts this has to be visible yeah it's visible now let's add the div and static ng for equals to uh, let post of posts all right so inside date this div will be iterated as much times as the number of array the objects inside it so currently we know that there are 100 posts inside it so this div is going to iterate 100 times all right so i'm going to write the h3 and using the interpolation i can write the post dot title what we have here so we have the title uh, let's show the title and body only uh, we don't want to show the id and user id if you want you can do it so let's add the p tag and show the post dot body all right and uh, after that we can simply show the line as well if we want so let's save it uh, yeah 
so guys you can see that it is actually fetching the data from that api and showing it over here this is looking so great and this is how we can actually call an api and uh, fetch the data uh, through the api using the service and any kind of api when we need to fetch the data from always create a service and use that service to return the observable if we don't write observable over here then we will be actually uh, able to use the subscribe keyword but if i hover the subscribe keyword it will show me that this subscribe keyword is actually deprecated uh, it is not actually deprecated but there is another way that we can fetch the response and fetch the error uh, so they let me show you quickly i'm going to actually copy this and i'm going to also paste this one and i'll be modifying that to remove that error all right so now in the subscribe function i can actually remove everything from it and then i can use the next keyword and this is going to give me the response this is the response actually and then it is going to give me the error error like this and then i can receive the error like this okay so this error should be gone so we can actually show the data over here like this and we can show the error error over here so there seems an error so let's see what's wrong so we actually need to uh enclose it like this we need to this is an object so you can see that we have the key value pairs uh, so we actually need to wrap it within the object all right also add the curly braces over here so the error should be gone and similar to this we can copy this and paste over here and we can actually copy this error message and paste over here now you can see that our subscribe error is gone that was showing in the previous part now if i save it it should work as it is as before so let's save it now you can see that the without error it's actually showing the same data of the post the title and the body and uh, this is how the apis work using http client i hope that you have got an idea how we can use it if you have liked the video and learned something do subscribe my channel hit the like button and see you in the next videos